Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Game Ball Podcast stream. I'm your host, Mark, and I know it's been a while. Um, had a couple weekends here uh, where real life got in the way. Um, as you all know, um, before the last uh, time we uh, did this, um, I had the Pittsburgh trip coming up for my niece's softball regionals. They went okay. I um, wish we would have won one of the games to get into the finals, but, you know, girls had fun. They weren't sad, so that is number one thing in my in my eyes. I've lost my competitiveness for win at all costs when it's like I'd rather not deal with the angsty teenager um, in if, if they lose. So that was fun. Um, and then last weekend I was in Virginia, King's Dominion, which is a theme park like Six Flags. Um, for those of you um, not familiar, um, for the weekend. So there was no Friday stream, no podcast. So instead of trying to squeeze it in on Sunday in both cases, after I had five to six hour drives back here, I thought we'd just hit a reset um, and uh, start the content, you know, over again, starting with uh, Donkey Kong Country on Monday. Uh, so we are back doing... Um, you know, what we normally do here week to week, so... Um, the only thing that might change up the schedule a bit is Labor Day, but that's adding a day. More than taking away, or adding more time to streaming than taking away. So, um, yeah. Alright, let's get this camera back in focus. Um, so, um, what I have been playing... Let's see. Mostly, which is no surprise to anyone out there, um, I have been playing a lot of College Football 25. Um, I have, I started out, um, my goal was I did, um, one season, um, so far of Dynasty with, uh, with Penn State. I think I may have mentioned this earlier, um, and, you know, being, starting out as a seventh ranked team in the country and all that makes it a little easy and, you know, getting high recruiting classes and it was just fun, you know, win the national championship with your alma mater and, um, you know, it becomes, you know, it's not, it's not so much of the fun weirdness of it. I might go back to that when I just want to just play through it and, and have fun during football season. But then I started another one where I was, um, started out as an offensive coordinator at a smaller school, um, Coastal Carolina, and I've been job hunting, job hopping. Um, I did two, I think I did two seasons of Coastal, and just, no, it might have been one season at Coastal, and then I did two seasons at Memphis as the head coach. And now I'm currently the coach of the University of North Carolina Tar Heels. Um, and we got a really good recruiting class coming in, so um, it should be fun. The game is good um, still. I'm still having fun playing the game. It's frustrating in a little bit, but I think what it's mainly doing that's different from the past college football games and even Madden to a certain extent um, is that it's taking your players' ratings um, into much higher consideration. So when I was playing my first year at North Carolina, um, I didn't realize my quarterback was only in the 70s in terms of overall, and I kept getting mad. I'm like, why is he missing all these passes? And um, didn't realize that in this game, it's not so much my ability to throw the ball as it is his ability to throw the ball. Um, like, if I wanted to do a bullet pass, if he's not really good at doing bullet passes, it's going to be a really small window for me to throw a good bullet pass. Um, and essentially, you know, I'm getting to learn that. Um, so we, we tend to run the ball a lot more um, when we need to. But I uh, haven't tried much defense. I think I'm going to switch over for this season to play the full um, game instead of just the offense. Um, yeah. Oh, looks like my glasses are crooked for some reason. Um, that might just be the angle of the camera or the angle of my head. Yeah, so. Anyway, sorry. Got distracted. Looking at myself again for the first time like this in a while. Um, so, yeah, that was fun. Um, I've been playing through a lot of that. I'm trying to think if I've done anything else in the past two weeks. Um, we got some progress in Donkey Kong Country. Um, we made it to the snow blizzard level 
Um, that's where we finished off last. So we got through um, some of the minecart stuff and, and some of the other tricky things. Um, I'm getting better at the game, but not good. I'm nowhere near good at the game yet, uh, but I'm at least learning some of the tricks, and I have started running. I'm using the run button, um, which some people um, put it down as to a lack of skill for me not using the run button, but in all honesty, um, it's my anxiety. I'm afraid that I'm going to run off the cliff and miss the jump uh, because I'm going too fast. Uh, probably why my sister is better at me at Sonic. Um, yeah, so that's essentially why that occurs. Um, but I'll get better at it. So, ooh, excuse me, don't know where that came from. Um, so we are, we're making progress. I don't know how long that game is, so God knows. Um, yep, using all the buttons on the control. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see where that goes. Um, and then we'll spin for another game. Um, I am very excited. I will have already played this by the time you watch this video or listen to it if you listen on Mondays. Um, but I am beyond excited to get back into Persona 3. Um, I think it's the one thing I missed. Um, and I just couldn't find times to squeeze it into other days of the week. Um, besides needing to clean up my apartment or do D&D &D or do the do TC Tam. Uh, that they call this movie podcast. Um, there wasn't a day between the two vacations where I could squeeze it in to even try and stream it for you guys. So I'm extremely excited for Saturday, for those of you watching live. Um, and then, probably second on that list would be near on Sunday, because I just got to a part where, you know, the game started being the game um, before I had to stop last time. Um, and so it would be fun getting into the crux of, of what that game is all about now that we're past the save point area. Um, or, the, or the place where I wasn't beating something and then um, we'd have to restart from the beginning every time. So, <laughs> that should be fun. Um, and there's works for a Thursday stream. Um, we'll see how the uh, production stuff I want to do for that goes. Um, like I said, it's not coming up this Thursday or maybe even next Thursday. Um, we'll see. Next Thursday would be, uh, that would be the, days the ninth. that would be the 22nd, would be probably the earliest um, that, that the Thursday stream would occur. So, um, be aware of that. Um, yeah. Yeah, so... I think I think that's all I played. Um, I don't want to bore you with a lot of uh, NCAA talk, um, as we, you know, will will be able to expand. I, you would think two weeks off, um, the news hour would be longer than usual. It'll probably be a little shorter, or about the same length. I'm assuming today, um, just because a lot of the old news is just old news at this point, and um, you probably heard it from a million other sources. Um, I made sure to grab the things I normally talk about for the end um, of each week um, that came out. Stuff has already come out, but just just to stay consistent with the podcast here. Um, yeah, I've got to remember how to get my face in this camera again. Um, that's what happens when you only stream twice in two weeks. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, that's it. I hope everybody else has had a good July and August. Um yeah, yeah, I can't wait. There's a there's like three games coming out um, soonish because um, I'm losing track of when games are coming out just because of all the running around I've been doing. Um, there's Star Wars Outlaws, the Zelda game. Hi, Jackie. How you doing? Um, you got Star Wars, you got Zelda, and um, Call of Duty coming out, um, which are three games that I've been looking forward to um, to play. Thankfully, one of those will be um, on Game Pass, so I don't have to worry about that. And that might be another game we talk about next week, is I may um, play through the uh, really short um, Modern Warfare 3 campaign, and maybe have some thoughts on that. Um, as I found out that I had pre-downloaded 6, Black Ops 6 on Game Pass, and apparently it gave me Modern Warfare 3. Because <laughs> I went to download it, it was like, you already own this. I'm like, oh... 
Okay. Um, so we'll play it. But yeah, yeah, looking forward to it. We'll have a lot more to talk about coming up. And uh, as I said on the stream, um, by the end of the month, early September, um, <laughs> yeah, they finally, um, as uh, Night Duck uh, says out there, something I haven't looked into, and, and maybe it's a knock on my a gaming card, but um, for those of you who might know, they uh, um, localized Fate Stay Slash Night. Um, out there, um, again, um, I had the same conversation with, um, I know Night Duck's probably slightly joking in the chat, um, about being the big release, but, um, uh, while in Virginia, um, you know, you know uh, Mark story time, um, I have two cousins from North Carolina, um, who don't see me much, but the one thing they know about their cousin Mark is that their cousin Mark plays video games. So they are 15 and 17. So they come up to me and um, start talking about the games they're playing. And and I have no idea what these games are. They're all these, like, computer browser games. Like, not browser games, like, uh, free-to-play computer shooter games that aren't, like, the popular ones. Um, and they're like, yeah, me and my friends tried this one out. It was pretty good, but they, uh, they uh, took it away. Um, yeah. Um... Oh, that's pretty cool. Interesting. I love when games that haven't been localized before um, finally get localized. As you said, it's really weird and long overdue that they're doing this for uh, Fate uh, State Slash Night. Um, so, yeah. They, there, there's a bunch of things where you go, wait, that wasn't localized yet? When they, when they release a big deal about it. Um... But going back uh, to the story, so, uh, yeah, they're, they're talking about all these really quick <laughs> shooters that, like, blow up and die out, and you, and I'm like, I, I don't, I, you guys play Final Fantasy? But the one thing we were able to, um, surprisingly, unsurprisingly enough, um, the one thing we were able to bond over was talking about college football. So, uh, all three of us were playing the college football video game, so that was fun. But every game they spit out, I'm like, I, I heard, I think I heard of that, but I don't play that. Um, uh, yeah. So, and then we talked about Call of Duty because as bad as I am at it, and they laughed at me with my, um, with my KD, um, you know, because they're teenagers. But I've come to the point where I just want to make steady progress with my KD, and I don't really care what the number is. Um, but... Yeah, yeah, it was fun. You know, it's cool like that that I am known as that cousin, um, and that they come to me for advice for games, and hopefully they took my advice for a couple of a couple of things um, that that I pointed out to them that they they could like um, the ones into anime a little bit, so I pointed them to um, and like like really like ADD high um, intensity stuff, so I pointed them to ZZZ. Um, and I hope his mother, who is really strict, um, doesn't object to it. But, um, yeah, so that was cool. And, uh, yeah, the oh, the one fun while we're talking about uh, my family members that are part of that are part of the family, the Game Vault family. Um, Kitty Ashcat is now apparently really into uh, Rainbow Six Siege with her friends, which I'm assuming it's a boy she likes that does it. Because all she talks about was, yeah, he just wants me to play and just keeps messaging me to play. And I'm like, oh, I see why you started getting into the Siege. Um, so she asked me to stream Siege with her, to which I gently declined. Um, because A, I am terrible at Siege. And two, God knows what 13 to 14 year old kids would yell over the internet. Especially if some of them didn't know they were on the internet. Uh, so we're going to say a no to that. Um, but I'm glad, my thing that I'm glad about is that she's starting to branch out from Roblox. That is the only thing I've always been upset with her. I look at those games on Roblox and I'm like, do you know how many better games there are out there that are even free? That are better than this, the stuff you're playing on here? Like, and I'm glad her friends are introducing her to that stuff. 
Like, um, not that it's a free game, but one of her friends bought her Lethal League. Um, and they were playing that for a while. Um, and, you know. So, yeah. Kitty Ash Cat's starting to understand regular video games. And that there's a better world out there than the stuff on Roblox. Uh, she still loves her Minecraft. Uh, but that's okay. Minecraft's fine. But, yeah. All right, let's move on to the news, and we'll start out with the, probably the biggest bummer of a story that may or may not have made the news last week. Um, when I um, would have done the normal thing, but uh, Game Informer um, is shutting down, like, or shut down. Um, after 33 years on Friday. Um, yeah, just sort of came out of, like, literally out of, like, this is normally when magazines like this shut down. Um, they're normally given, um, yeah, removed from the internet, like, literally gone. Which, um, now, I had to do it in a move because I didn't have any room for it. And God, I wouldn't have any room for it now. But I did get rid of, like, a whole bunch of old Game Informer magazines. Um, like, ten years ago, because I was like, ah, Game Informer, I can always find these things on the website. Um, so yeah, this is the most fucked up, as Night Duck says in the chat, um, way to handle this. They literally told them on Friday, nobody knew, people were out, like, getting stories, I think some people might have been on the trips they go on for cover stories. They were about to do a cover story for Dragon Age Vanguard, I think it's called. Um, a big cover story for that. Um, they literally, like, closed off the archives so nobody could back up their stuff for, like, professional purposes to, like, put on resumes and stuff. Um, and they basically um, shut down everything, like, almost immediately. And then, um, and then laid them all off, obviously, if you're going to do all that. And then the other thing they did was one of the people still had access to the Twitter account and they put a heartfelt message on there to the fans, not the bullshit statement that was put out by GameStop. Um, and they shut down the Twitter account. Like, immediately. Which is really fucking dumb. Like, and... Veilgard. There we go. Uh, I knew I was going to get that wrong. I literally... I'll go... I'll get into my head, uh, Night Duck. I literally in my head was going, I think it's Veilgard. But that sounds wrong. I'm going to go with Vanguard, because that sounds more like something EA would do. Um, but yeah. So, yeah. They were... I'm excited for that, but... It's got, it's, we'll get to a story on here about backlog, um, things that I'm going to need some time for. Um, but yeah, um, I thought we'd open the show with this just to you know, reminisce a little bit. I mean, I, I got my first copy of Game Informer, ooh, 94? I think that's when the Funko Land opened in my neighborhood, um, I know it was pre-PS1, because that's how I found out, like, I didn't, I was at the age, I was 10, we were going to be 10, um, <laughs> oh boy, I would have, the, the offense that would be caused by people in both fandoms, Night Duck, to call me a Call of Duty bro, or have said that I was an RPG stan, um, because I don't think I'm as as much as I play them as deep into the it deep into RPGs as, as some people are. I think I would be offending both groups if I was put in there. But yeah, so with Game Informer, I as a ten year old, eleven year old, barely just got the internet. Because um, yeah, my first time, my first computer in '94, um, and. That's 1994 for all you youngins listening. 
Um, and I didn't know anything that was coming up for video games. I I was completely a word of mouth person. Um, I had a neighbor on my street that uh, showed me a Sega Genesis for the first time when I was like six. Um, before I got that. And then my friends and all, you know, I didn't read the internet stories. I didn't, there was no social media, obviously. So I had no idea about that there were even video game magazines. I think the only magazine that I ever purchased uh, when I was out at the supermarket with my grandmother was I would get the WWF magazine because I was into wrestling. Surprise, surprise. Um, so I got this, and that's how I sort of found out about PS1. Um, took me a little bit to get it, obviously, because, you know, we weren't as well. We weren't, you know, probably mid lower lower middle class, sort of. Uh, had to wait till Christmas. Had to wait, you know, for all that stuff. Uh, but, yeah, that's when I learned about Final Fantasy VII for the first time. Um, and, you know, learned about all the Final Fantasies, to be honest, because I only knew about the first one because my cousin had it for NES, and that was it. Um, which is why I was a late... Uh, bloomer to Final Fantasy 3 slash 6. Um, you know, I think I think my first, I wish I would have kept these because the only ones I kept were my Final Fantasy 7 one that came with the guide um, my 200th um, um, uh, issue one and the top video games one, like the special ones I kept the special ones, but I threw out all the regular ones um think I'll have to look and see if they had one but for some reason I remember Sonic being on the cover and I think it might have been for Sonic 3 was my first maybe Sonic and Knuckles one or the other I know it was a big Sonic game that was on the first cover of my magazine um, and I was hooked from that day forward um, I even had the fun story like I got to my first year subscription um, and then and then they send you the card to renew and I sent it in myself with my handwriting as a 10, 11 year old. And they called my mom. <laughs> because I didn't know you had to pay money for it. Because I got it with my, um, what's it called? Um, my, my Funko Land, like, subscription thing for buying games. Um, and, uh, so she had to explain to me how it worked. <laughs> Um, I eventually did get it. I had the magazine for a long time. I think, ooh, I want to say up until somewhere in the 2000s. Like, definitely not in college. I did not get it in college. Um, so it'd be early 2000s. Um, and then I periodically here and there would get it, um, which is how I ended up with the 200th edition and um, the 250 video games. But it was, it was an event. Every time that magazine came to my house, it was I read it cover to cover every time. Um, sometimes read it multiple times cover to cover because you'd be so excited about something. Um, it was the first time I learned about game guides and helped me through Final Fantasy VII, except it didn't do much for some of the secret stuff, so I kind of got stuck um, and just needed to grind at the end to finally beat it. Um, and, you know, that's how, you know, I, I think it had a Ocarina of Time um, guide in one of the magazines like it was it was it's very much a big thing of my childhood like I had an entire probably um, plastic storage container full of just game informers which wouldn't fit anywhere in my apartment right now um, so I am not upset that I don't have them uh, but you know I kind of wish I did, but I, I can't be a hoarder um, with it. I kept the ones I wanted, which was most important. And, yeah. Yeah, this... I, I had a mixed emotion of being as fucking pissed as, as Night Duck was with his emojis. Um, I, think, I think I had the same range of emotions uh, that Night Duck's emojis had. Like, pissed off anger, crying, crying, like, and then pissed off anger. Because I come from it from, from two directions here. One, I loved Game Informer. Like, before, you know, they had to go digital because that's where the world was going and magazines weren't anything. When magazines were magazines. 
Um, I only read Game Informer. I never got uh, uh, Game Pro, EGM, never had any of those. Um, only Game Informer. So, you know, I got to know, you know, over the years, you know, Andy McNamara and, and Andrew Reiner and, and all those guys that were there for a very, very long time. Um, and, you know, and through the digital stuff, when I re-entered um, becoming a gamer, um, and, yeah, and, learn, like, finding other people that I love their content, you know, from the Dan Reichert's um, to the Kyle Hilliard's and, and just just people like that along the way, Leo Vader and stuff that I, that I picked up um, through Game Informer. Um, so I was really, like, really pissed off on the one end of being a gamer and just saying, like, this, like, written work needs to be done because you can, even if it's just on the internet written work, like, there needs to be better things than what, like, as I say this with an IGN story pulled, more than what IGN and GameSpot do um, on there. Um, and Game Informer did that. A lot of features that I would read. A lot of really good writers over there over the years. Um, so I was really, really pissed that we're losing that part of the industry um, with deep dives on cover stories and stuff like that. Maybe somebody will pick it up now that these companies don't have anywhere to go um, for it. But the, the, the second thing I was pissed off about was just coming from the side of being a former journalist and knowing that I can't find all of my stories um, digitally. I have 95% of them like cut up paper-wise in a shoebox like all former journalists or current journalists have um, just for this issue. Um, but that part really pissed me off that they did it immediately. That they didn't give them time to get their work to help them get other jobs. Now, GameSpot had no right to do that. It was just a nice thing to do. But that fucking company, if it wasn't for that stock stuff, would have been dead years ago. I mean, this probably would have happened years ago too. But the company itself would have been dead. As Night Duck says, last time I was in GameStop, I went in there just because... Uh, my niece is really into, um, uh, what's the name? Um, God, that anime. Demon Slayer. Really into Demon Slayer. So, I went there because I knew they had Funko Pops and things like that. Like, little figures, you know, that I could get for her. Because she's redecorating her room now. She's about to be a teenager at this point, And she wanted stuff to put on shelves and things like that. So I got her some regular, normal statues and all that. So I went, hey, let me for Christmas. Let me go see what GameStop has. Give her some little things, you know, because as much as I hate Funko Pops, um, they, they seem to like them. So I went in there, and, like, that's that's all it was, was all that. Um, and it just didn't feel like the same store anymore. It's been a while since I've been in there. Um, probably pandemic, like pre-pandemic. And it just felt, skeezy is probably close to the right word, but it just felt like that's all they wanted to sell. And the people like didn't seem like, happy at all to be there and things like that. Not that they were in 2019, but, you know, it was just like, yeah, I got be all that stuff over there. You know, none of that, none of that, hey, man, we look for all that, we got that over there, you know, okay. And then, you know, even faking it. Um, yeah, this company doesn't deserve to exist anymore. Um, if not just for this, because they just shut down, like, one of the jewels of the industry. Um, they just, they're not in it for the right reasons. And not that they're, like, I know saying all this about corporations, not every, all of them are in it for the same thing. But, you know, there, there's a certain way to do it while making money and not being, um you know, all the, uh, you know, just, just trying to be profitable, like just trying to make money more than, um, make, or I should say make the most money possible, because everything's trying to make money, um, trying to make the most money possible instead of finding the balance between making money and making their stores, um, something to go to, um, every GameStop I've been in, um, since, say 2017 2018 roughly is empty 
I go in there and there's one person in there maybe. And and back in the day, yeah, they they barely have any recent used games as well. Metal Militia. As you said, you left when the retro stuff left. There's barely anything there. There's an entire shelf dedicated to Wii for some reason because I guess grandmas come in and buy them for their grandkids who still think Wii is the big thing. I don't know. But yeah. And and all the used stuff they have is is not priced to be worth it. Like the only steel I got, um, you know, I grabbed something. Oh, what did I get for her? Yeah, they, they, I grabbed something for um, Kitty Ashcat that was like twenty dollars off new. Uh, for some dumb reason, I forget why. But yeah, I just wanted to vent a little bit. Because as I say, Game Informer was a really big part of my development as a as a gamer, um, in the in the positive sense of that word. Um, it le it taught me about every type of genre, taught me about all the people that make the games. It 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 allowed me to know about things coming out. If it wasn't for Game Informer, I probably wouldn't have bought a Dreamcast on nine nine ninety nine. Um, you know, because I wouldn't have known it was coming out. Um, you know, it's a very big deal in, in my development, um, and probably why I'm kind of here today in terms of my love of video games. Um, it's all due to this magazine that I used to read when it came in once a month. Um, and, yeah, it's just a shame that it's gone. Like, I tried to get the newer generations into reading the magazine, but they, they would just go watch the YouTube videos. And I'm like, well, I feel like a dinosaur, but... It used to be, um... <laughs> well, obviously, it did not teach me about FSN. Um, yeah, but... Yeah, I would have been... I would have been that person that probably would have just been a... You know... Like, whatever my friends played, which they were really into sports games and shooters. That would have been me. Oh, no, I know we are dinosaurs. But it was just... It, it just came to a point when I when I had that conversation about trying to get them to read magazines. Um, you know, you sit down, you, you know, maybe when you're in the bathroom, you read a magazine, you know. Ah, I just want to be on my phone. Uh, uh, not even getting into the hygiene part of that, but, um, which we all do it. So, no, 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 don't lie. Um, but yeah, yeah, this is really, really sad. A lot of the people that I follow in the industry and have respect for in the industry came from Game Informer. Because, like I said, being a, a magazine, get a little more respect. <laughs> fair. Fair Night Duck. But honestly, I loved NCAA football before I ever got a Game Informer. I had Bill Walsh College Football uh, for the Sega Genesis, so... Um, can't even blame Game Informer on that. Um, yeah, the, uh, yeah, but, yeah, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have, hey, goat, how you doing? Um, yeah, so, goodbye, Game Informer. If, if anybody is as, as nostalgic and, in, and love Game Informer as much as I do, I highly recommend going over to the MinMax channel. Um, I don't know if everything's up on YouTube yet. I know he's doing a lot of stuff, streaming Patreon. Just, you know, there's there's a great conversation of everybody just giving their piece. Um, Leo Vader has a really big rant basically saying, fuck you to, to GameStop. Um, so I highly recommend checking all that out. Um, so, yeah, yeah, moving on. And uh, huh? Goat, nice to see you. Glad that uh, we can be your break. From Grinding, uh, Season 5 of Diablo 4. Let's move on to our next news story, which surprisingly, probably does not surprise anyone, uh, it's about College Football 25. Um, I only pulled this because I wanted to uh, talk about a couple things. So, their major updates here is they added new uniforms. Um, now that the schools have revealed them, they're able to unlock them in the game. Um... They made some adjustments to the O-line behavior, which I, um, which I have noticed, um, and, uh, you know, and, um, 
you know, just fixing a bunch of stuff here, um, adding new scenario and NIL stuff, um, and, you know, essentially, you know, you can read the patch notes here for everything. Um, I want to go through this extensively, but the only reason I pulled this, and just be real quick about it, um, the new update um, introduced a bug um, that I don't know if they're going to update <laughs> just for, for a little bit, but now when you come out to the play, um, you normally have the score box at the bottom, you know, telling you the score time and your um, like play clock. When you press the uh, right trigger button, because I'm playing on Xbox, the right trigger button to bring up your formation and all that so you can see what's going on um, and kind of read the defense and all. Um, once you get out of that R trigger and pop down, the screen is blank. It's just your thing. So you have no idea how much time is on the clock, how much time is left on the play clock, anything. Um, so I hope that gets fixed. Um because it's hard to play mental countdown while you're... Um, thankfully, the controller vibrates when you get to six seconds, but that doesn't help when I'm in the middle of making an adjustment. So, um, hopefully that gets fixed quickly. But, I'm glad to see a lot of the other major stuff got upgraded. This is probably a minor thing that just will need a quick update that they can do, like a hot, hot fix. But, yeah, so I'm glad that they're... This is all I wanted from this game, is that when they keep updating it, they update it with content of things, and not just bug patches. Um, what I mean by that is, you know, updating uniforms, adding new stuff to Road to Glory in terms of the scenarios and stuff. Um, that has nothing to do with gameplay. Just adding stuff like that into the game. Um, and, yeah, yeah, the gameplay stuff are always coming bugs, but... This stuff they added here partially is what I really wanted them to keep doing, and hopefully they keep doing it. Um, the game is popular enough for it to be. All right, moving on to um, Control 2, surprisingly, is in production, um, or as they call it, production readiness stage um, at Remedy. And Max Payne remakes are in full production, which was the slight surprise um, to me. Um... So it looks like uh, Control 2 will probably come out, I would say, in two to three years, maybe more, um, because it's going to go into full production around June 2025. So I'm looking like 2027 at the earliest it would come out. Um, but they have the Max 1 and 2 remakes um, in production to kind of fill the gap um, between them. Um, the... I'm hoping they find a way to, um, oh, let's, let's go up, uh, let's stick here, um, I don't need to see Ariana Greenblatt's screaming face, it's Tiny Tina, um, while talking about this, um, yeah, so, uh, the interesting thing, which, I, it probably says it in the story here, um, but I'm assuming they're gonna keep the voice, um, because it would be real shitty that the voice actor dies and then you remake the game just to get a new voice actor in there. Um, there are AI ways to work around him being dead um, for the remakes. I mean, if you make a new game or, you know, maybe a reboot or something, then you can, um, you know, bring in a new voice actor. But if you're remaking 1 and 2, it needs to be the same voice actor. Um, yeah, or it's in from a different dimension or something, you know. Yeah, just something. But I think if they're doing true remake, they got to just use whatever AI tools available to um, make the voice work. Um, but yeah, this headline got me really pumped because I am beyond excited for Control 2 here, after, especially after Alan Wake 2 um, and all the lead into this. I can't wait for the Lake House DLC to come out, um, which will probably connect these two. Um, between Alan Wake 2 and Control 2 and then um, and this is a nice filler for um, I don't know well it depends on if they got permission to do it I mean I should have added that caveat in if they're still paying the person for 
the voice or the family for the voice, which I feel like Remedy would do that. Um, like still pay the contract out um, to the family. Uh, but companies and companies, but you know. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I just don't want them to just change over the voice, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it can be an argument, a weird one. That maybe AI is not the right thing. Maybe they just use the voice lines um, that were already recorded and just just make them part of it. Um, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I completely saw that through when I said it. I was just thinking if it was remakes and not, or, or you know, not, um, you know, full reboots, you know, but maybe that's why they are doing it so they can introduce a new voice actor to bring Max Payne into control. I never thought of that. We talked through this. This is why having the, having the live chat here, um, helps. Um, that, that might be what they're doing. Um, essentially, um, let me scroll the story and see if they mention it before we keep talking out of our ass. Um, nope, they don't mention it. Yeah. Okay. You'd think that would have been a question someone would ask. Um, True. This is this is what it looks like when you. <laughs> talk through something and you get. And get. Uh, correct. It's probably the wrong word. Um, because that sounds mean. But giving some ideas that you didn't think of, um, there. But yes, new voice actor. I think we we've settled on that. Um, for 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 Max Payne there. Hell, we'll make it Sam Lake. What the hell? No, no, that would go against. I only said that as a joke because that would go against the new people in the industry thing. Um, but yeah, yeah. So I am I'm really excited about all of this. Um, just to see how it comes about. Um, and this was the backlog thing I was uh, mentioning. Oh, come on, pause. There we go. The uh, avowed <laughs> developer said they're delaying to February 2024 to give players backlog some breathing room. That is a really great way to spin um, that, the <laughs> that, that the game is not completely ready yet or needed some little tweaks. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're not delaying this because we need to go fix a few bugs and, and maybe add stuff to the game that didn't test well and all that. No, no, we're doing this to give your backlog some breathing room. Out of the goodness of our hearts, we're doing this. Um, now, again, they could very well be doing that, but it just, um, it's very much the, uh, the statement on the front of my shirt is, you know, whatever that saying is. Um, yeah. Yeah, it feels like this is more to benefit them, obviously. But they're spinning it to make it seem to benefit the players. Um, but I think, yeah, I think the original release date was right around when everything else was coming out in, like, October, November. And it would make sense to get out of there and into, into Q1. Especially. Or Q4, whatever. Would that be Q4? Would be the beginning of the year? I think it's Q4. You know, get into the beginning of next year. So, so yeah, anybody looking forward to a vow, you are going to have to wait till February 2025 um, for that. Um, I am interested in it. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't want to compete with those games. Um, so, yeah. 
yeah. Again, the uh, probably going to be a Game Pass game because it's first party. Um, so I'll probably get it on Game Pass. But yeah. yeah, for those of you looking forward to it, Val, I thought I'd pass along that news for you. Um, this was an interesting story um, that I read. Um, I understand why um, people would want this or did it. And I understand why people like the yellow paint. I am kind of neutral on this. Um, I think the only time yellow paint is needed is when only certain things are climbable. And not the entire mountain face or whatever. Um, you know, that that's the only time you need paint. Like, nope, nope, this is the only ledge you can grab. Don't keep jumping over there. And wasting your time. Um, if you're making everything climbable and scalable or whatever, um, turning off the paint is fine. I the the my only thought on this is that it is going to be one of those um, fuck around and find out moments for people that just cry about the yellow paint, like the really annoying people that cry about it, not the ones that are like, ah, oh, you know, I'd like it to be a little more, you know. Let me explore a bit, you know. It, it's fine, but I wouldn't have the choice, and this is what it's given you. I wouldn't have the choice to not have that paint on there. Um, because I want to get more immersed in the world. That's fine. But the ones that yell about the yellow paint being, um, you know, casual and fake gamers, and it makes the games way too easy, and, you know, all that bullshit. Um, that, um, people, like, the corners of the internet yell and if those people actually use this explore mode it is definitely going to be a fuck around and find out moment because then we will also see those same people uh go to your discords your reddits your x twitter whatever and go oh man i spent like 30 minutes i couldn't find the platform i needed to jump on to get up there you know why'd they make it so hard to figure out where to jump you know, it should be it should be pretty easy to tell which one to jump on. And those people are going to say the same, those things, and I am going to sit back and laugh. It took me 40 minutes to find this one, um, one cave. Yeah, it's 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 going to be a hundred percent that, and I'm going to laugh, 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 laugh. But I think this Star Wars Outlaws thing is the best compromise. Let the let the true good people and the assholes turn it off and find out what actual explorer mode is like. It's like the people that turn off the UI. And give them the option. It's awesome. They wanna they wanna they wanna sort of get enveloped in the world. I get it. Perfect. But leave it on for people like myself, um, who is a little dumb at times. Um, while playing games, um, and maybe wants to finish games, you know, without being frustrated. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, um, the only, I will play the first 10 hours if it's free trial on EA Play and see if I like it at all, um, before doing any purchase. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Um, so yeah, but yeah, the yellow paint, it's just... I'm so glad it won't. It, this should end the debate, and people should go. Oh, this is the way it should go for everything. But it won't. People will still find ways to complain and stuff like that. Speaking of Star Wars, this was the funniest story that I, I saw um, while I was away. Um, they're putting Jedi Survivor out on PS4 and Xbox One. I don't think I've ever seen, and maybe I'm wrong, um, again, uh, Metal Militia and, and Night Duck are just as plugged in to certain things as I am. Um, but I don't think I've ever seen them go down a generation, like a year or so after the game came out. Um, and I understand why, because they're leaving a lot of money on the table with PS4. Especially um, people that played um, the first game. Um, 
you know, it to allow them to, you know, finish the story, not to use a wrestling uh, term. But yeah, I read this was like, oh, okay. I'm like, I know why they're doing it. And to be honest, it's fine. You know, um, I think what I like about this, and as, as Madam Militia said, as I probably thought, it's not unheard of to do this. But I love the idea, and this is my first time hearing about this, and I may be naive and not um, as dialed into this stuff, because once I buy the next generation, I just think of the next generation. You know, privileged in that sense. Um, I love that they did it after. Like, I think that's the problem with a lot of games, especially this generation, because they've been really late to just cut off the old generation, um, is that you know, put all the work into the, you know, into the, into the PS5, Xbox, Series X, you know, PC versions, and, um, yeah, I wasn't saying anything about the quality for it, um, I'm saying the, it, the idea of, of it going out exclusively for one, for the ne new, new, um, what's it called for the new generation of consoles and then a year or so later releasing back into the older generation yeah it, that's what i was saying but i think i don't i don't think the concept is bad or weird i think it's a great idea if, if for the money reasons and and the bunch of people that still haven't upgraded um allows them to play the game but i love the idea of doing it in this way you know have to have the team you know you know, uh, concentrate on new ge next generation stuff, and then once if we release it and do what you need to do next generation, then go back in and go, hey, what do we need to do to make this work um, for PS4 and Xbox One, and then take in that time and then release that later. I think trying to do them simultaneously hurts both games. Um, Yeah, I think it should become the norm, even if this was like a special case. Um, in that, you know, it, it. I think releasing at the same time on old, newer and older gen hurts both, because it it you run into like sort of the cyberpunk issue, where everything just looks shittier. Um, on the lesser version because you didn't have enough time or not lesser the the older version because you didn't have enough time to optimize it for the older version and then the newer version doesn't look great because you didn't have time to optimize it for the newer version you were trying to make it simultaneously work on both um so whether you do you do older first newer second newer first older second i think staggering the releases is the way to go going forward until there's a high enough adoption rate of the new consoles. That's just that's just my thought on this. The concept itself isn't bad, you know. I like the, I like the staggeredness of it. Is is mainly what why it piqued my interest. All right, moving on to the final two stories, um, which is our normal stuff, um, and then I'll have a little thing at the end, um, or one big story that I did not mention. Um, but I didn't want to... We already had sadness at the beginning. So, um... Here are the Wave 1 games for, um... Xbox Game Pass, which you would have gotten already this week. Um... So... Yeah, so you have, um... Let's see, did I have the list? Yeah, so... Uh, the Crash Bandicoot and Sane Trilogy... Um, which is um, out, and the uh, Mafia Definitive Edition, which comes out next Tuesday. Um, so, and Creatures of Ava, um, which is, um, I don't know if I ever heard of that game. Yeah. Uh, you're a young woman who tames wild creatures suffering from an infection using a flute. Gameplay is a lot like Power World, but instead of using violence, players try to save the infected creatures. Okay. Yeah, so that's the that's the stuff coming to Xbox in the first wave of the month. 
Um, I'll probably I'll probably download the con uh, the Crash Bandicoot and play it a little bit. Um, that seems interesting. And then um, finally, uh, the play the PS Plus monthly for those of you that have it. Um, let's get down to the list. Do they have a list? No, they didn't put it in a list. All right. Um, so um, for August. Um, it looks like it's going to be the Lego uh, Star Wars Skywalker Saga. Um, and it includes the uh, DLC characters, uh, Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. I'll have to tell um, Kitty Ashcat about that. And then Ender Lilies um, as well. So those are the games you can pick up um, if you have those services. Um, and there's a bunch of other stuff that's come out. Um, they'll be coming out later in the month as they do two waves per month. Um, I don't know. I think these... I think those are the free games for PS Plus if, if you have the lowest tier. There. I, I the, the levels of PS Plus confuse me. I think this is, you know... For, for the free games on the lowest tier. So, um, yeah. Um, the one thing I, I skipped over, because I didn't want to talk about it too deeply, but um, there was the really shitty layoffs at Bungie, um, which wasn't as bad as the Game Informer stuff, because uh, even though as terrible as that was, that was your normal evil corporate layoff thing. Um, it wasn't whatever the fuck GameStop did to Game Informer. I've never seen that. Um, but yeah, as much as the positivity we had last time we had the podcast, um, where places were unionizing, still gonna have these layoffs. And, um, I don't know, a whole lot of people seem pissed at Pete Parsons. Um, I didn't have time to dive deep into why. Uh, um, but, um, I assume it's because he's, he did something that made himself look like a piece of shit around these layoffs. So, um... Yeah, it wasn't, you know, as 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 Night Dot said, the the bungee stuff literally was terrible and and possibly killed the company. Um, and it's been many many things over the years um, that they've done to do that. Yeah, I think I think that's why why we got as we got angry, but for some reason in me it didn't get as angry as the Game Informer thing because that was just so immediate and cruel rather than the standard layoff things we've seen over the years which is sad that we're becoming a little desensitized to it. Not a whole lot but a little bit like, oh there are layoffs here that fucking sucks. Fuck that company. Alright, what's going You know, like we can transition from that um, a lot quicker. Um, because it, it's stuff we've seen before. The the, the GameStop stuff is, is... I've never seen a company shut down an entire website in a single day and then shut off its Twitter account. Like... Like that. Like, gone. Um, because they still like to make, you know... You know, make money. Until, and, you know, until an end of a month or something. That screams to me... Uh, going back to the game for that screams to me of a company that can't pay their servers. And GameStop's probably just going to be done soon. Uh, but yeah, the Bungie stuff was really, really shitty, and just really terrible decisions over the years um, that they thought Sony was going to help with, and Sony probably got their books and looked and was like, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> you know, um, because I feel like Bungie was one of those companies that caught up in the over-hiring for um, after the pandemic, so um, I wanted to leave that here because I couldn't really find the story on that because that was so long ago. Uh, but, yeah, comp uh, video game industry still shit, uh, but getting better, um, with some of those unions occurring, so, um, yeah, sorry to leave you on such a down note, uh, but that is the way of the video game industry, um, right now, but, like I said, I look forward to some games coming out, and, um, yeah, and getting back into Persona 3, I am, every so often just in my head, like, I'm playing Persona tomorrow. I'm so excited. Um, so, anyway, to recap 
Um, for those of you that might have joined in the middle of the podcast or whatever, um, we're back on track for everything. So, you know, tonight we had the um, Game Ball Pie News Hour. Um, tomorrow's Persona 3. Sunday is Near. Um, and on Monday is Donkey Kong Country. And the release of the podcast um, on your podcast services, if you did not catch this live. Also, it goes up on YouTube. Um, and then we just, you know, repeat that. Um, like I said, in about two weeks, there may be a new Thursday stream. Don't know how long it'll last. Maybe through um, uh, the fall. Um, we'll see how it plays. Um, doing some extra production stuff for that. So, we'll, fingers crossed. We'll see how that goes. Um, and, yeah. And that's about do it. Um, I can't wait to come back next week and have more to talk about because I've played more games than college football. Um... But yeah, thank you guys for joining me, as always. Uh, thank you, Meta Militia. Thank you, Goat. Um, thank you, Night Duck. Um, it was a great conversation with the uh, uh, Max Payne stuff. Um, I appreciate um, our fans out there sort of calling me on something and then explaining why um, what I said was probably very incorrect. Um, I truly, truly appreciate that. That is why I love having the chat here for these new shows, that I'm not just on talking head spouting off bullshit um it's a nice interactivity here so um once again thank you guys for joining me we will be back for those of you watching live on twitch we'll be back on saturday um for those of you watching um the youtube archive or listening to the podcast hopefully you're doing that on a monday um we'll see you tonight for donkey Kong country and if you're listening to it anytime during the week um we'll see you back here on friday for the news hour fun as always and uh, hope you have a good weekend. Stay safe if you're around any of these storms coming through as well. And uh, just stay inside and play video games. It's always the best choice. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Bye!